It's been a while since he last joined me, but my guest this this uh, this episode is someone who's now joined the list, uh, a relatively short list of three time guests to this <laughs> program. Uh, last time he joined me, it was for Sirens on USA, uh, a, an unfortunately short lived show, which um, really bummed me out because I was I was a big fan of that show. Uh, but now you can catch him as a series regular on the new Amazon Prime original series upload, as well as the Moody's on Fox. Please welcome back to the program, Kevin Bigley. Awesome, man. Thank you for having me three times. It's a, it's a, big, it's a big deal. Yeah, well, it, it's not to you, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, it, it, you've done so many of these. I'm I, waiting for my shirt to come in the mail. Then I, shirt? I'm I was going to say a trophy. Time. A trophy, I would, I would love that. I would put yeah. that up for sure. So if it, it was going to be a trophy. I was actually, when I, when I do the images for the podcast, I was actually going to put like a little award symbol in the corner with a three, three X in the bottom. It. So I'll make a shirt. I'll send you a shirt. It Terrific. Works. Terrific, man. So, but yeah, man, it's, it's been a while since I had you on. You know, Sirens was going into its second season, which unfortunately didn't last any longer than that. No, no, um, it bummed me out too. Um, I loved that show. So, so good. I mean, I, I'm, I'm lucky enough to work with Bob Fisher again on the Moody's. So he show ran Sirens and then... Um, well, not only, not only Bob Fisher, but you're reunited with Leary again. Yeah, Dennis. Uh, you know, who was a producer and Josh Segarra, who was on Sirens with you. Yeah, I didn't get any scenes with Josh, but I hung out with him constantly in Montreal. I... Uh, I have a yeah. funny story about Josh that I think you'd get a kick out of. Um, since, since we last spoke, I've gotten into moderating panels at conventions and things like that. Cool. And he did uh, a bunch of conventions because of his role on Arrow. So I, I moderated a panel with Josh, Echo Cullum, and Rick Gonzalez. And apparently Rick has this whole thing about make, or Josh has this whole thing about poking fun at Rick for his previous things on his resume, like old dogs and coach Carter and things like that. And he was doing it constantly on the stage. And I saw an opportunity to kind of defend Rick and kind of take a shot at Josh. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to take it. So at one point when it kind of calmed down, I mean, and every time you would do it, Rick would just kind of like hang his head and echo would laugh. And then at one point it came time for me to take a question from the audience. And as I pointed out to the audience, I said under my breath, but so they could hear it, it's all right, Josh, we're not going to talk about sirens. <laughs> <laughs> and the audience got a kick out of it. And I was worried about how Josh would take it. <laughs> so when the panel was over at the end of the panel, but when we were backstage, I said to Josh, I said, dude, I'm so sorry for that dig. He's like, don't apologize. That was fucking awesome. Ah, oh, that's so good. So, so good. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, that's that's great. We would uh that's funny because Josh and I would um would do that to a lot of people on sirens like who were guest stars and stuff. We would pick the most random um like thing that they did like on their resume from their IMDb mm -hmm. and we would just talk about it to somebody else around them, you know? So yeah. I, like we would just be like uh if someone was in the old dogs or something, we'd be like Look, okay, come on, like, let's go. This is not how it works on like a set like old dogs, okay? Like, we need to let's 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 pick up the speed a little bit, you know. I just realized I meant old school, not old dogs, but the old, story. <laughs> yeah, it's the yeah. same thing. That's probably where he got it from. Right? Yeah, we were both doing it. That's funny. Like he, the, Josh is the best. Josh is such a good dude. Yeah, um, such incredible guy. guy. I, I have no doubt that he would be a good sport in in, in that kind of a joke. Yeah. So you, you, you really, you literally just got some good news. I don't know if it's yeah. public yet, so I don't want to bring it up. It is. Oh, no, it is. Yeah. It just got out there that Moody's is going again. So uh, season two, um, I don't know when we're shooting. I don't know when it's coming out. Uh, I think deadline said something about a spring season, something's coming out in the spring. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, that's all it all, but it's all so fluid. It could be, it could, start any point it could you know whatever but um it's good it's great it's great news i'm uh, um hopefully it sounds like I, t I just talked to bob sounds like i'm coming back and um you know schedule permitting it's just going to be a lot of you know i think you saw jurassic world tried to start and they but they stopped and um 
I'm shooting on uh, the Rotoscope show Undone right now for Amazon. We're starting up this month, and uh, there's a lot of that one's easier because it's like there's a lot of that's a lot of animation mm -hmm. around shooting, but um, we don't have extras or anything. But like it's really challenging because you know it's kind of like um, like a horse race where the gate's gonna open and all the horses are gonna start running at the same time. Yeah, so a lot of these places, the cities are booked, you know, as far as their um, their capacity and their sound stages. So. It's just a, it's just a, it's a, it's a mess. Like everything's a mess right now, mm -hmm. but you know, we're, everyone's optimistic that cautiously that we can all make it work. But you're doing well, man. I mean, you got Moody's just got picked up for season two. Upload was already picked up for season two shortly after, if not before it even premiered. Yeah. Like right after the, uh, a week from when it dropped. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and rightfully so, cause the show is amazing. Um, and that was pretty much one of the main reasons why I wanted to have you on too was be was to talk about upload because I mean and I'll, I'll happily talk about anything you want to talk about but <laughs> uh, the funny thing about upload was I see you know I mentioned the moderating and everything so I know Robbie because I've I've shared the stage with Robbie a couple times uh, so that was the main reason I wanted to check out upload I thought the premise looked intriguing and I knew Robbie was the lead so I wanted to check it out and I remember it was probably like the third episode, you know, we're introduced to your character, Luke, in the first episode. Yeah. And it was probably the third or fourth episode. The whole time I'm watching these episodes, I'm, I'm seeing you and I'm like, I know him from somewhere. I can't place it. <laughs> and it was by the third or fourth episode, it clicked. I'm like, holy shit, that's Bigly. Yeah. And, it, and then my love and admiration for the show went even higher. Yeah. Be because of you, me know it now, knowing that you were a part of the cast as well. Yeah, different, different character for sure than Brian. So you yeah. get you get a different thing. Still heart of gold in, in to a degree, I guess. But like, yeah, different vibe for sure. But it, it's a uh, it's such a good show, such a fun show, and it's a show I'm really proud to be on. Robbie's awesome. Um, funny that um, you met them both at cons. They're both they're both such sweethearts. They're both mm -hmm. such sweet dudes. Um, and uh and yeah robbie's spectacular in it but yeah it's a it's a it's a killer show uh i've gotten that from a few people that they just didn't they didn't it didn't register at first you know they're like well just because i come uh screaming like my first word as a character is the word fuck which brian wouldn't would cross himself several times but you know after he's after he cussed so i think it's the hair yeah. too Oh yeah, it's long. Well, especially you know, uh, people can't see it now, but it's so yeah. It, I wanted well, way way Brian's hair was this. It, let's get let's get into it. Um, <laughs> oh sure, let's do it. Yeah, uh, no, I, I the, like as a young actor, um, you know, I, I grew I grew up blue collar, and it was like I was very aware of the stereotypes of actors of being you know uh, dramatic and and uh, and you know prima donna. So what I didn't want to be was this, this guy who's uh, a problem, you know, a troublesome actor who's egotistical. So when I would get work, they would go, so what do you want to do with your hair? I would go, whatever you want to do, because I didn't want to be the person who would be like, just make my hair. Cause I knew, I heard stories. I knew actors I worked with who they demanded certain products. They would also demand certain like hair meetings where they had like hair people come to their hotel room and like talk about what they want to have done. So for Sirens, I was like, I'm not, whatever you guys want, whatever you guys want. To yeah. Do. And they did my hair like this Conan O'Brien pompadour. <laughs> and I was like, holy yep. shit, like you guys really, and then like the second season, especially, it was like a tower. And um, Bob was even like, Jesus, why did you out tell them to do that? And I was like, oh, I just kind of let them do it. They're very sweet people. Um, but they just were trying to do something fun and comedic. And, uh, but after a while, I, um, after that, you know, you're trying to get work and like you're sending around your reel and your reel has this giant pompadour. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> like, that's you, you know, like, so it was kind of, um, with, with upload, I was like, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to request that we have my hair be my hair. <laughs> you, you wanted to show your hair range. Yeah. I just wanted to be like, look <laughs> like myself, you know, like mm -hmm. I wanted to actually, and Luke is a little bit closer to me than Brian is, as, as sweet a, a, a person Brian is. Uploads a, a more grounded show. So um, 
yeah, I wanted to have, although Luke's ridiculous, I still wanted to just kind of have some representation of a version of myself. Yeah. Um, and I, I really do think it was the, I really do think the hair was part of the reason why I didn't <laughs> recognize you because even going back to a couple of years ago, you, you did a cameo, you did a, a cameo appearance on Brooklyn nine, nine mm -hmm. and you had shorter hair then too. And yeah. I recognized you right away. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, it took me a couple episodes of upload for me to recognize yeah. that that was who you were. I had to grow my hair out for, let's keep this on my hair. Let's just talk about it. <laughs> it just talk, uh, the next 20 minutes. Is, I had is to grow hair. my hair out for, uh, I was always looking for an excuse to grow my hair out because I just wanted to do it. But I kept getting parts where they were like, let's keep your hair short. So I, uh, I got a job on uh, the show Here and Now, which was now on Ball Show for HBO in 2016 2017 and they were like you're like a hor uh, a portland hipster so like can you grow your hair out a little bit so i had to grow my hair out and i was like which i was super excited about and then i was like no i'm just gonna fucking keep this like this is sticking around so i actually started i feel like booking a little bit more because everybody had kind of a high and tight haircut you know mm. um that's the story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> breaking away from the hair for, for okay, a okay, fine, fine, fair enough. You know, um, you know, Greg Daniels obviously is is the creator of Upload. Um, yeah. You know, were you a fan of like The Office and Parks and Rec before diving into Upload? And uh, I honestly had no idea who this <laughs> guy was. No, I know, of course I did. Um, I actually had worked with Greg already, um, and in 2012, it was like my first. My first big pilot job. Uh, I'd had a pilot before uh, I had moved out to LA in um, Chicago, which was uh, like a pilot presentation, but this was my first full length pilot for, uh, for a network. So it was for NBC, they were trying to adapt the BBC show. Sorry, I'm going to talk through a burp because I had some Diet Coke. Um, <laughs> it's fine. So, uh, um, no holds barred, man. So uh, they, exactly. they were trying to adapt the BBC show, or Channel 4 show, uh, Friday Night Dinner. So they were trying to do that, and um, they've tried to do it several times, but uh, Greg was going to be doing it because obviously he's successfully adapted shows from the UK before. So, uh, yeah, we, I, I worked on that, didn't get picked up, but it was like a really great experience. We actually, I tested for it on the um, Parks and Rec uh, uh, set strange because it was being shot at the same time you have a mouse rat shirt so we had yep. to shoot in uh andy andy and, and april's house like their that uh a house that they get but which was surreal because i was just such a huge fan of greg's and i'm, I'm such a huge office fan mm -hmm. so even just a test for greg was was pretty surreal and eye-opening and and um and uh intimidating but uh but when it didn't get picked up i was just really uh, profoundly depressed by that because I just not just because I didn't get to quit my day job which was valet at the time but I didn't get the opportunity to make a full season of television with one of my comedic heroes so um it, I was watching this is a long-winded story but I was watching um in 2016 <clears throat> you know post sirens I'm kind of trying to figure out what my career is and where we're going to go from here and I was talking to my wife and we were watching uh, Last Man on Earth, which I just loved. I, I, I adored that show so much. I was so bummed when it got I canceled. I loved it so I much, and I love Forte, but I know Eric Durbin, who was co-show running with Forte, and he 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 co-EP'd um, on uh, he co -EP'd on Sirens and is a good friend. And so I was texting Durbin all the time, just being like, this is an amazing show, and this is like a dream show for me. Like, This is the kind of show that I would love to do. Mm -hmm. And Kate was my, Kate, my wife, she was like, when I was sad about my career, she was like, what would you, if you could pick one thing right now to do, what would you do? And I was like, honestly, I, if I could have my ultimate dream job, it would be that I was doing on a reputable network. I was doing it, uh, I was an ensemble member, not the main guy on uh, a show that was like this, that felt like, like Last Man on Earth, you know, that was funny, but thoughtful and thought provoking is smart and, and I wish that it would be with someone like Greg. And so it's like, I literally got that wish. You got exactly what you asked for. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With, with so I can't, I, you know, I, I, people were like, well, what I've gotten a few in few interviews, like, well, what's like the dream gig after this? And it's like, man, this is it. I just hope <laughs> that I, 
it's just going to, it goes for a while. And then I, I, my career is just a series of repeating acts of this. I'm, I've, 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 uh, without sound at uh, the risk of sounding pompous, I've, I've definitely arrived in that, in the, to that extent that I'm just yeah. very, very pleased and happy with. Did it, did it make it having screen tested already for Greg in the past? Did it make it easier to, did it make it easier and maybe a little bit more comfortable to do yeah. it this time around? Yeah, literally I, I got in front of, I went in for an audition for it and, um, and I, I went in, read for this part that was an ancillary character, you know, wasn't going to be a main guy. They didn't think Luke, um, and I read for it, had one scene, which was the buffet scene, and the casting director, Rachel Tenner, she was like, um, okay, well, you know, you might be coming in really soon to, for Greg or something. I was like, okay, great. And uh, I was like, you know, I worked with him before. And she was like, oh, okay, interesting. So then I get a, an email like an hour after an audition, which is not common. And they were like, you know, uh, can you go back in? to meet with Greg to, to, to do the sides for Greg. And I was like, yes. So I show up and Greg didn't even know that it was going to be me. The casting director had done it. And he was like, Oh my God, I had no idea you were going to be here. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was like, well, I've worked with him before. That's what this is all about. You know, cocky. And then I get in there and it's, I don't know, man, I think auditions are just kind of, they're almost like, like speed dates where you're, you want to be able to do the part, in, in the right way, but sometimes auditions I think are like in, in to a, a speed date in to an extent that you are just trying to suss out whether or not you guys vibe, uh, not only as human beings, but it, it, taste wise, you know, yeah. if you like what I'm doing, we have very similar tastes. Well, I have similar tastes to Greg because I like idolize all the things that he's done <laughs> down to his Simpson episodes, you know, Homer Badman and everything. I, and his, and his, his, uh, his sketches on SNL. I know a lot of these things and I was raised on them. So I remember when I auditioned for Friday Night Dinner, it was just so easy to make him laugh because I'm just biting his style, you know, um, and, uh, and stuff like Carell. I'm just repeating, I'm ripping these people off, the people that, who he's worked, uh, who've worked for him. So when I went in and I did that, it was easy to an extent because I've already done that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And then he was, he just told me, uh, he was like, look, he brought Robbie in who was already cast with them. We kind of improvised a little bit. And then Greg just told me like, look, um, this isn't, this isn't a regular right now, but hopefully if the pilot were to get up, you know, we would get picked up. We were kind of trying to figure out who would stick around so that these main characters can go on little adventures with them. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was like, well, I'm just going to go do my job. And I did. And, and then, then I got it after it was going to get picked up. I got a, a call from Greg being like, Hey, I think we might bring you on full time. And I'm, so, I'm so glad they did too. Cause Luke yeah, is too. such a fantastic character. And I mean, just some of the adventures that, as you put it, that he goes on with, like, with, with Robbie's character. I mean, when they go kind of, I guess it was off the grid when, you know, where they go to like the tattoo, yeah, the gray market, the gray yeah. market. Yeah. It's, it's so good. I mean, and you have so many, what I love about the cat, the show itself and the cast is that there are so many characters that have so many great moments. Like every, every character has a chance to shine at some point, but some of the lines that you have delivered and it's a combination of the writing and your delivery have practically floored me. Oh, I, I, I mean, like I, the, 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 I can't remember. I remember Luke and the, the kid that's in. Oh the, yeah. Um, when you guys come back from the gray market after you get the tattoos and he becomes a woman walking around yeah. and your character's like, I miss the titties. Like it's, <laughs> it's so, it's so good. Yeah. It's so damn funny. And, yeah, and yeah. the show, I mean, the, the show is, is funny. It's smart. It's intriguing and mysterious because there's so much you still that they've left open for a mystery. Um, and I was so happy to see you a part of it. And I was so happy to see that it got picked up for a season two. Yeah, I was I was really stoked when I heard that it was uh, it was Amazon just did an amazing job promoting it. And obviously, we had a <clears throat> captive audience, which was uh, too bad that everyone was inside, but good for you know people watching the show, of course. Mm -hmm. But I was glad that I got some nice messages from people being like, I enjoyed this during my quarantine, so that was good. But I think overall, it's just uh, you know a, a joy to work on. I think Luke is this character that 
exactly what you said, like takes you to the gray zone. He's kind of this facilitator of, of, uh, of, ex- of world exploration. You know, this guy who's, who's constantly trying to find a game, you know, something to occupy his time. So it's, it's fun to play that character who gets to kind of navigate the world and show you all of the stuff that this show can do. It, it's a weird comparison, but if you remember like the original NES game system, there was the game genie that you, yeah. that yeah. Luke is kind of the game genie of this. Book. I have wow. used that analogy as well. Have you like, really? I, okay. have, I have the cheat codes. Like I yeah. have it. There are people who like the game and are obsessed with the game, but like, but Luke is obsessed with finding the game within the game. You know, Mm. he's, he's, you know, if he's in Westworld, he's, he's looking for that center space, how this, how we can get more dangerous, how we can grow from here. Um, Or, and if he didn't have that in a way, uh, he, he's doing that to keep himself alive. If he didn't, if he couldn't find that game or found the end, even he'd probably just jump in the torrent. <laughs> he's, 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 trying, he's trying to find those ways to make sure he doesn't go psychotic. And yeah. like he mentions in the first episode, talking uh-huh. to Robbie, he's, he's just finding all those little. Gotta believe it's real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. In a way he, to me, he feels like Dennis Hopper in apocalypse now. Like he's, got all the cameras and he's just like he's he's up there man and like we're not like he's just believing in it like he he's kind of crazy but um you know uh also a sweetheart yeah yeah and i i I don't know if this is something they plan on doing like i know you know we already know that season two got picked up production hasn't started yet obviously because of everything going on in the world right Right, now in the country are are there scripts written yet that have been sent to you or are you still very much in pre-production at this they um they have had a room i can say they've had a room since february Mm -hmm. and uh um which was like speculative they would they were doing stories for a potential season two, which had factored into us getting a season two. Um, Amazon was very happy with the numbers. I don't know what they were, but they would they don't tell us, but they said that they were very happy with them. So then uh, they kind of, when they picked us up, they, the writing got kicked into overdrive. So everybody was writing a lot more. So everyone's got their scripts and they're writing them and Hopefully uh, they'll be due pretty soon. So we don't have them, but they're definitely being worked on right they're, now. They're, yeah, they're in the process. So, yeah. Because I, I do hope we get to see a little bit more of Luke's backstory because, I mean, it's, it's so intriguing to me, a, a soldier who lost his legs in the war and now ends up in this, in this virtual world. And I think, yeah. ha- has it been explored? Ha- how did Luke die? Was it, was it suicide? Because that's what I read online. Killed himself, yeah. Okay. Uh, he 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 will he wheeled himself underneath a, a scanner. So yeah. okay, that's that's what it was. Okay, yeah, he 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 had done that, which is hilarious because he's like joyful about it. So <laughs> I, I think that there is some talk about maybe that that you know there he, he, obviously we saw so many of Robbie's memories because there's access to him. There's the memory parlor, mm-hmm. there's a lot of that. So there, yeah, there there. I think that um, what Greg is great about. Uh, with the ensemble, what he understands about it so well is that a lot of comedy comes from knowing people, you know, and, and knowing characters. And, and that's why, um, you know, uh, there's so many people. <laughs> so we got positively reviewed for sure and favorably, but then there, I, I'd read a couple that were, that were pretty negative that they'd mentioned that we weren't like the office or weren't like parks and rec. And it was like, um, yeah, but how did you review Parks and Rec in the Office season one? You know, like yeah. I mean, it's so funny that you bring that up too, because I mean, like space, like Greg Daniels' other show, Space Force, just debuted on Netflix not too long ago, and I watched it and I enjoyed it. But it's because, like, yes, it's it's Carell, it's mm-hmm. a bunch of other people from other projects, but you kind of have to go into it separating yourself. Like, okay, I have to expect this not to be the office or parks and recreation. If it was the office and if it was parks and rec, people would hate it even more because it was like trying to, they, it's trying to, it's a no win. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's a no win, but for us, it's like, and I'm uh, assume space force people as well. <clears throat> it's, it, it feels so unfair to be like, I love those shows too. But like, if you're going to compare us to a first season, compare us to the first season of The Office or of Parks and Rec. Don't compare us to seven seasons of Parks and Rec and 
and, and, and 10 of the office when they're fully realized characters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, in regards to Luke growing in season two, um, I think midway through season one, not, and I think every episode's great and uh, you know as a standalone. But what's really nice is all of a sudden this thing that this show that is stuffed with all these avenues. You have the noir element. You have the relationship between uh, between Nora and Nathan. You have Allegra's character as well, like what's going on with their relationship. Then you have me and Zainab as this comedy. You know, you have all these avenues. And you need to kind of establish them before they really start to pay off. And I think that Greg does that um, to where the, the, the show, you know what you're going to get from specific parts when you see characters in specific scenes. Yeah. Um, and now that, that's, that the groundwork is laid, we can explore a little bit more with, uh, uh, down those avenues and um, it'll, be more, it'll be more interesting and it'll be easier for us to do because – the groundwork's laid, you know, yeah. it's there. You know? I, mean, I mean, you know, in, in comparison to those first seasons of Greg's other shows with The Office and Parks and Rec, I mean, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I rewatch The Office and Parks and Rec all the time. There's not a day that goes by I don't watch an episode or two of those shows. Right. I very, very, very rarely ever go back to season one of The Office. Right, right. Because I'm just yeah. not a fan of that season. Well, it, 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 Carell's character is different you know like um, very different yes. yeah he, he even uh greg had even said that it's like michael scott was they had made him they had made him so unlikable and then steve carell got really famous as like this really endearing sweet guy and they're like why are we making america's sweetheart so unlikable so season two michael's character changes a bit and he becomes more childlike mm -hmm. and he's still offensive but he's not mean you know and and they figured they figured it out. They, like, it, shows take a little bit. You know, Sirens was like that too. The first few episodes, it's like we're trying to figure this show out, and it's good on paper, and we're still figuring out our characters and stuff. So it's like it just takes a little bit for you to kind of get going and 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 find what the show is and what how we're going to shoot it and you know all of those things and what what does the world look like. Everyone gets more comfortable. So I think that you know if this is a good first season of television. Um, for upload, and I think uh, I, the the second season, from what I, the little plot points I've heard, have been so fun that now it's just it's a little bit more relaxed, and we've proven ourselves. Like it's a it's a watched show, it's a popular show, you know, which um, is launching a show is so fucking hard to do. So the fact that we were able to do it um, and get people to watch it is is a really exciting thing, and now we can kind of you know, I mean, barring pandemic, relax a little bit and yeah, make the show and flesh it out even more. You build that chemistry, not just between yourselves, but with the writers and the producers and everybody else. I mean, you look at any other long running show, not just The Office or Parks and Rec, but you look at Seinfeld or you look at Friends or you look at Big Bang Theory. I mean, these are shows that gradually, for the most, for in most people's eyes, of course, they're critics of all those shows. But for the most part, the shows got better and funnier as they went along because that chemistry built up. Yep. You the know, goal is to build. Uh, yeah, you want to build characters, and you want to build characters that you can that people want to see in different situations. That's why it's a situational comedy, and and I know that that sounds <clears throat> pretty rudimentary, but it's it's very true because if you look at George Costanza or if you look at Michael Scott, uh, they're just such good, well fleshed out, funny. Um, characters that uh, have comedic engines in them that uh, that are always running that you could literally pick those characters up and put them in a situation mm -hmm. that they will then make about themselves and it's immediately funny so that's <clears throat> that's the goal but it takes a little bit of time Costanza isn't really as fleshed out in the first season he's not George until uh, you know season two and three especially so it's like okay it takes a little bit of time for everybody to find this person. And, you know, Greg's really good about forming characters around people, you know, <clears throat> with all of us, when he cast us, and especially when some of us became more regular, he took our reels and he gave them to the writers. And he was like, here's kind of the, here's how jokes sound coming out of these guys' uh, voices. You know, here's how they talk and here's kind of how we envision them and what works for them. So, they watched that stuff and they helped us out. And now they even, even more so they know what we can do and, and we know that they're taking care of us. So it's, it's really effective. 
Yeah. Um, I know we're, we're running a little short on time, um, but one of the things I wanted to bring up before we wrap things up was you guys are actually doing a panel at Comic-Con yeah. at home for San Diego. Uh, when, when is your panel for, uh, for people that want to be able to stream it? I'm pretty home. sure it's the 23rd, um, but I'm, I'm so excited about this just because I've wanted, I mean, I'm also bummed about it because I've wanted, wanted to be there in person, I yeah. To go, I wanted to go so bad, man. I've always Have you ever been? To, no, I've always, 23rd, 23rd, uh, 23rd at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, okay. uh, and you can find more out about that on, like, the upload um, Instagram and stuff, but no, I've, I've never been, I've always wanted to go, you know, we were supposed to go to South by Southwest and they had rented out a whole city block and they were going to do a virtual experience and all that stuff of what it's like to be uploaded. You know, there was going to be some cool stuff, but man, <clears throat> obviously there's some bigger fish to fry right now and some terrible things happening and I hope everyone's safe and being safe and everything. But I think that these are all activities and things that we can do. And that will be more fun to do when the show is as, uh, uh, even more established. So uh, I'm looking forward to next year, and hopefully we get to do Comic Con in person next year. But I'm looking forward to the panel. Yeah, I'm I'm excited because this is, I've always wanted to do San Diego Comic Con too because I've done cons all up and down the East Coast, and right. I've always wanted to go to San Diego. But now I get to do it from the comfort of my home, which is yeah. Nice. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, where can people find you on social media? On Twitter, Instagram things like that so they can Instagram follow Instagram is at Kevin W. Bigley and then uh, Twitter is just at Kevin Bigley. I had to throw the W in there. To someone, <laughs> I have my name. So, there you go. so awesome. Well, um, Upload is on Amazon Prime right now. It's 10 episodes. They're half hour episodes. It's easy to binge. I binged it all in a day. Oh, awesome. uh, I, I binged it all in one sitting just because I couldn't stop watching. It was, it was that good. And I know a number of my friends who I've convinced to watch it and I've gotten to watch it or have watched it by other means. I haven't heard a bad thing about it yet. So um, I'm happy you and I finally got to do this. We've been kind of bouncing back and forth for probably yeah. about a month or two now, crazy, since, yeah. um, but the world's just been crazy. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad we finally got it to work. Yeah, me too, man. Thanks for having me on. And uh, we'll see if we can get you on that even shorter list of four-time guests. Four times. I can't you'll, imagine. You'll be the only person on that list as of right now. So, Woo! Um, I hope it's like a bumper sticker or something. <laughs> the, only, the only other people on that three-time list is um, a buddy of mine named Pete Mitchell, who's a musician out there in California, nice. um, and Colin Mockery and Brad Sherwood from Whose Line Is It Anyway? Wow, Colin Mockery. Kick yeah. ass. You're in good company, man. Yeah, I'll take, I'll take Colin Mockery company for sure. He's yeah. hilarious. So, uh, Kev, thanks again for doing this for me. Um, uh, in the meantime, everybody who's listening, make sure you check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. Uh, and until next time, uh, we'll see you in another episode of the Spotlight for Learn Down the Road. Take care.